live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. I don't think I'm revealing any breaking news here or uncovering a major story when I say that former New York Jets head coach Rex Ryan likes to talk a lot. If there was a Hall of Fame for the most entertaining coaches in NFL history, and for the most talkative coaches ever, he would be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Heck, they might even name the entire Hall of Fame after him. Now, there are some moments where him talking and not being afraid to run his mouth is incredible. His comment in his first season, where he said he didn't take the job to kiss Bill Belichick's rings, is an all-timer. The 2010 season of Hard Knocks was quite easily the best season of all time for that show, with his eating a snack comment becoming legendary. And I could go on and on about all of the hilarious things that Ryan said, and the time he used his words to inject some personality into the head coaching profession. But there are some times where his mouth got him into trouble. And man, was this one of those times. Imagine your team drafting a player and drafting him high. Your fans have faith in him that he'll be good. Your general manager and your scouts have faith in him that he'll be good. And the player in question is hoping that he can fill a need and be the future of the team. Yet you openly say that you didn't want to draft him, that you weren't impressed by his tape, and that you were highly skeptical that he could produce. Seems like a bizarre and, quite frankly, stupid thing for a head coach to say. But in 2012, New York Jets head coach Rex Ryan did just that when he talked about the team's second-round pick, Georgia Tech wide receiver Stephen Hill. And let's just say that, like always, Ryan caused a firestorm. This is the story behind the craziest controversy and maybe the dumbest moment of Rex Ryan's entire head coaching career. Before I talk about the comments in question and what led to them, we need some context to understand just who Stephen Hill is, and why the Jets, or at least most members of the Jets, wanted him in the first place. The year is 2012, and the Jets are coming off of one of their most disappointing seasons in franchise history. After making it to the conference championship in back-to-back -back years, many people had Super Bowl aspirations for New York in 2011. They had the fifth best odds to get there, and had better odds than the Pittsburgh Steelers, a team that made the Super Bowl the year before, and made it in two of the last three years. Now the good news was that New York made the Super Bowl. The bad news was that it was not that New York team. As for the Jets, the season ended in drama and disappointment with an 8-8 record, including a three-game losing streak to end the year. And while there were many reasons for the Jets' inability to make it back to the playoffs for the third straight season, one of the main ones was their atrocious receiving unit. They didn't have anyone cross 1,000 or even 900 yards receiving. Their top receivers, so excluding tight ends and running backs, was Santonio Holmes, who had 654 receiving yards and amongst all wide receivers in football, ranked 44th in yards. When your top wide receiver isn't even inside the top 40 in receiving yards for players at his position, that is very bad. Their second top guy was Plaxico Burris, who wasn't even on the Jets in 2012, and who was going to be 35 years old. And behind him, they only had one receiver who had over 100 yards that was still on the team at the end of the season, and that was the rookie, Jeremy Curley. It was an unimpressive group that needed a ton of help, both at the top and in terms of depth. Fortunately for the Jets, there were options in 2012 that seemed on the surface like they could make an impact. And one of them was this man right here. This is Georgia Tech wide receiver Stephen Hill. Now, when looking at Hill's numbers from his time with the Yellow Jackets, while they were good, by no means were they impressive. He had 49 receptions in his entire collegiate career, and only found the end zone nine times in that stretch. However, the one thing he had going for him was his deep catchability. He was a great deep threat averaging 29.3 yards per catch in his junior season in 2011, which not only led the ACC, but led the entire NCAA as well, making him the first Georgia Tech player ever to lead the NCAA in this category and giving him the fourth highest yards per reception average in NCAA Division I history, only behind Brendan Marion of Tulsa in 2007, Rich Greetling of Illinois in 1958, and Ernest Gray of Memphis in 1977. And if any player had their stock shoot up from the NFL Combine, it was Hill, who stole the show. He ran a 4-3-6-40, which was the fastest amongst all receivers. He ranked first in the broad jump for receivers, and caught all but one pass thrown his way in drills. 
And draft analyst and future general manager Mike Mayock said it best, summing up Hill's performance at the Combine by saying that he killed it. As Mayock said, I had a bunch of scouts tell me before the Combine, this kid might blow the roof off of it. And he did. His acceleration and his quickness were impressive. When he got on the field and caught the football, I thought, wow, he didn't double catch balls. He made hand catches in front of him. He's kind of pushed himself in the forefront of this wide receiver thing. Even though he wasn't exactly turning heads at Georgia Tech, when he got to Indianapolis, he made heads spin and became one of the most coveted receivers in the draft. Sure enough, the Jets, impressed by his performance at the Combine and needing to fill that position, decided to draft the guy in the second round. With the 43rd pick in the NFL Draft, the Jets traded up and made Hill the 6th receiver off the board. Just out of curiosity, if the Jets didn't take Hill and instead opted for the next receiver off the board, who would that have been? Oh. Well, I'm sure that this decision won't come back to haunt him in any way whatsoever. Anyways, Hill was excited about the move, saying on being drafted by New York, I feel great, especially now that I'm in an offense where I can catch the ball a little more. Catching the ball from Mark Sanchez will be great. I'm going to make sure I get with him as soon as possible. He was excited to be there, and General Manager Mike Tannenbaum was excited that he was there as well, and said on Hill that it gives the team something that they haven't had in terms of size and speed. Seems like everyone was happy that he was a part of Gang Green, right? That was everyone except for Rex Ryan, because a few months after the pick was made, he decided to do an interview with Sports Illustrated, and he caused a firestorm because of it. As the 2012 preseason was wrapping up, Ryan did an interview with the legendary late Sports Illustrated reporter Don Banks, and during the interview, he decided to talk about Stephen Hill and how the team went about drafting him. Now think of all the ways that you can answer that question. Then think of the way that Rex Ryan answered that question, because I guarantee you, it wasn't what you had in mind. Ryan decided to say during the interview that Hill wasn't productive in college, didn't impress him on tape, and he would have gone in a completely different direction. As Ryan said, nothing told me he would contribute. Nothing. When I saw the tape, I was concerned. But GM Mike Tannenbaum and senior personnel executive Terry Bradway and all of our scouts were adamant about this guy. They were adamant that this guy can do it. He can run all these routes, he has good hands, and he's got 4-2 speed at 6'5". He was the guy they all wanted. But honestly, when it came down to it, a wideout? Not my dream pick. Okay, there is a lot to break down with this comment. I get what Ryan was trying to do here, knowing how much he loves defensive players, and how if it was up to him, he would draft nothing but defense. And I get what he was trying to do in the sense that his scouting department and general manager knew more than he did about college players and he wanted to delegate the praise to them for finding this guy. But surely, there is a better way to phrase it than that. You could say something like, I didn't know a whole lot about Hill before the draft process started, but our scouts and our GM loved the guy, and the more I watched, the more I fell in love. You could say something like, you know me, if I could draft defense every pick, I would. But Hill was too good to pass up, because we all love the guy. The one thing I wouldn't say if I was trying to convey this message was my general manager and scouts went against me because this guy did nothing in college and didn't even fill a position of need. And the crazy part is that, to anyone who had a working set of eyeballs, wide receiver was absolutely a position of need. Did you see how depleted your unit was? Did you watch any of the games last year that you were coaching? Your receiving unit was one of the worst in football. I'm not going to say it was the worst, because the Jacksonville Jaguars exist, and if you can name one receiver on that 2011 Jags team without looking it up, I would be impressed. Seriously, the most reliable receiver on the Jags by the end of the season was Chaston West, and he was on Green Bay's practice squad in the middle of the season and never played again after 2011. That was a fun year. But the Jets were definitely at the bottom of the league. And you're saying you wouldn't have picked a receiver? That's like if the Texans after the 2002 season, when David Carr was basically getting massacred every single game, if they said that they don't need to improve their offensive line. Naturally, you can imagine the firestorm that ensued because of these comments. Fortunately, because this is 2012, there are internet forums still out there where you can look at the reactions of fans to these comments. But when you combine Hill's struggles in camp 
including a fight with Antonio Cromartie and an awful preseason game against the Carolina Panthers, where he dropped a touchdown pass and dropped another pass, which went off his hands and led to an interception, these comments added fuel to the fire. And I don't think people were assuming that Ryan was joking after that. If I'm Andy Reid, saying that Patrick Mahomes isn't my first choice at quarterback is clearly a joke, because he's playing well. But if I'm Andy Reid, and there's a receiver that's dropping a lot of passes, and I say that he's not my first choice at wide receiver, that doesn't really feel like a joke in that context. But in one of the most chaotic training camps of all time as it was from a media perspective, especially since everyone was infatuated with Tim Tebow, otherwise known as the greatest tight end in NFL history, trying his luck out at quarterback, this only added more fuel to the fire. And the backlash was so bad and so severe that days after making those comments to Banks in the interview, Ryan was forced to backtrack and clarify that they were taken completely out of context, and that it was all a joke that was more of a self-deprecation of himself and had nothing whatsoever to do with Hill and his abilities. Ryan said that the whole thing was blown completely out of proportion, and that the thing about Hill not being his dream pick was nothing more than his attempt at humor. As Ryan said, that one took off way different. He's definitely my pick now, because I think he's going to have a really bright future. But I think Ryan forgot the number one rule of humor, and that is, know your audience. This was a one-on-one -on -one interview with Don Banks from Sports Illustrated, a print publication. It is extremely hard when there is no audio, no video, and no other witnesses in the room to gauge your reaction to truly convey sarcasm in print form. If Ryan said this during a press conference with the cameras rolling, it would be easy to tell if he was joking or not, if he was laughing, if he was smiling, etc. But in print, it's completely different. And if this truly was Ryan's intention, then he failed miserably at that. It's almost like a man doing a speech about how all short people should be killed. And if you're not four feet tall, you shouldn't be allowed to be a part of society. If the man making that speech is three foot ten, but he's ranting about this to a blind person who can't see that, the blind person isn't going to know that it's a joke. And that was the problem with Rex Ryan here, if he was even joking at all. Plus, if Ryan was even joking, where was the punchline? Nothing that he said in that comment could be construed as sarcasm by the average person. He said that nothing on tape showed that he could contribute, and that he didn't do a lot in college. And he was right! It's not as though Hill won a ton of awards, set a bunch of records, and caught 10 passes a game and led the conference in every category. His tape was relatively lackluster. That was a big concern, that he was a combine warrior who couldn't do it on the field. It's like if I said this year that I wasn't high on Clemson wide receiver Justin Ross because of his injury history. There's not really a joke or a punchline there, so to try and pass it off as a joke is just bizarre. Hill brushed it off, saying that he didn't even know about the comments made until someone brought it up to him, and said that he had a feeling that Ryan was joking about the situation because he's a defensive coach. However, there is an old saying that there is a grain of truth in every joke, and you could definitely say that here. Because Hill was one of the biggest wide receiver busts in the history of the Jets franchise, and many regard him as the worst draft pick that general manager Mike Tannenbaum ever made. Ryan may have been joking when he said that he didn't want Hill, but he was looking like a genius after his disastrous stint in New York, where he had some of the worst hands in the league, and where his knees weren't cooperating with him whatsoever. He played just two seasons with the Jets, recording 45 receptions for 594 yards and 4 touchdowns. If you're watching this video, congratulations. You scored as many touchdowns away from MetLife Stadium as Stephen Hill did. Hill was cut before the start of the 2014 season and never played another game and never caught another pass in the NFL again. There are some moments where Rex Ryan's mouth not only made him the subject of media attention, but made him the subject of a ton of criticism, and this was definitely one of those moments. I would say that the moral of the story is that sometimes it's best not to say anything and to not even open yourself up to being misinterpreted, but come on, it's Rex Ryan. It's what makes Rex Ryan who he is, and makes him the polarizing figure that still lives on in NFL history. But of all the controversies that Ryan has had in his career, this is definitely up there with one of the stupidest comments he ever made. Why he even joked about this, I don't know. Because when it came to Stephen Hill, this was quite the hill to die on.
Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com. And be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar 9 To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.